Good afternoon and welcome to the Ladies Football Show on the 42 with the LGFA. My name's Emma Duffy, I'm your host for the afternoon and I'm delighted to be joined on the line by Galway star Alva Daverin and we'll also have Tipperary's Ashton McCarthy in the studio later for more chat. So first of all I suppose we'll head over to Galway to see how Alva's getting on. Alva, how are things? How are you Emma, how are we keeping? Not a bother yourself. Good, not too bad now, still driving the family mad. <laughs> still smiling, still positive. Uh, that's it, yeah, staying as positive as we can be now, that's, that's all we can do. Absolutely, well I suppose first off we'll start with that kind of nasty knee injury you picked up against Mayo recently um, and you got you got a bit of bad news yesterday. Yeah, so we found out the, the cruciate, so uh, unfortunately now we'll be just, you know, looking to, to do whatever the surgery or whatever has to be done over the next while and, um, you know, just do the best we can to get the, the best recovery. Absolutely, and I suppose, Alva, how did it actually happen? Was it just jumping for a ball, you came down on it, or what, what happened in the game? Actually, yeah, I have no, I have no fear in watching it back, and I, I'd say just an awkward fall, and uh, it just the knee went from under me. And I, Well, in fairness, I, I've been very lucky I haven't been injured for 19 years, so it's, it, I, have been, I have been lucky in that sense, just a pity it had to happen at this time. Absolutely, and I suppose the moment it happened during the game, did you kind of realise how serious it was, or is it just kind of in the aftermath now? I uh, know at, at the time I knew I I felt everything go, and uh, my three sisters have had knee problems. Previous sister did, um, older sister did cruciate herself out for two years, and another sister the medial, and I know we'd no knees <laughs> knees are, are are aren't an uncommon thing around around here, so. I felt everything go and I just knew myself I was gone. Absolutely, and I suppose now, so we're looking at nine months pretty much with cruciate. Yeah, yeah. Not to panic, there'll be, there'll be plenty of things that I might get back into a bit more music, play just music there, and um, I get a bit of coaching in or whatever, so I set little goals after the surgery and try and get them done to get back in. Of course, we're looking forward to a big day out on Sunday as well, so we'll focus on the the team that's that's there at hand now and uh, please god we can we can get some silverware absolutely and i suppose just as well i saw the news i suppose on twitter when tracy tweeted the picture and you were kind of in the bed smiling happy out and you got loads of nice well wishes on social media oh uh, yeah i know sure aside from social media the girls have been great and around me has been amazing friends and family so I, I, it just shows you how just how lucky I am. Do you know, lots of people in lots of trouble than nobody, and I'm absolutely very grateful for everyone who gave me help and maybe a, a, a thank you to anyone who is who didn't get a mention there. I really do appreciate it, and please God, it'd be worth it in the end when I get back. Absolutely, I suppose the main thing is kind of is kind of staying positive um, and whatnot. So I suppose maybe just looking back through the year you kind of had you had a very good year on an individual level obviously a great year with Galway to date so far and um, so it must be kind of tough that you are missing out at this stage of the year yeah yeah no but sir, uh, I suppose it's the team and if we wanted to if we wanted to play individually we'd, I'd be playing tennis or something but I uh, know the team have been outstanding this year and uh, they've shown it in 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 the performances we got and uh, they're just an amazing bunch of girls and they've still been so supportive and they're so committed and they're not going to leave any stone unturned now, and they're, they're going to do their best. Like we, we realise we're coming up against the greatest now, um, but you know we're we're going to hopefully you know rise to the challenge. Absolutely, and I suppose so. This is your second year senior, Alva. Yes, it is my second and year. And yes. I suppose what has it been like, kind of finding your feet over the last two years? Have kind of the older girls on the panel been really welcoming and and helpful and whatnot? Oh yeah, of course, sure. Uh, throughout all the years they've been the older ones are always dealing with new ones coming in and they've been outstanding you know even for girls ahead of me and girls coming in now and I suppose on senior teams especially in ladies there is um there is the gap in ages from all the way up because you know that's sometimes you can come in very young and you can play until into your into your thirties. So I suppose I know the the girls are outstanding and they're probably going to be laughing at me here now. Um, but um, no, up all the way now on on Saturday and that's it. <laughs> Absolutely, and I suppose looking at Saturday, um, obviously the Dubs in Doctor Hyde Park. You've met them twice this year already, and Galway are the only team to have beaten them in a competitive match. Um, 
kind of how do you see that one going on Saturday? Ah, yeah, sure. It's, you know, it's uh, the ambiguity of it is, is frightening now, I'd say, <laughs> even more so for people not playing when it's not not in your control. But I uh, know I'd say, you know, we're matched. But we're we're not we're not you know forgetting the greatness they have and they are they are still the top dogs and even even if you look in as far as the bookies they're still they're still highly rated and you know they've good colleges there as well you know DCU and UCD last year pushed O'Connor Cup and um, we'd be looking to kind of you know you know get the dubs from from UL's perspective as well this year as well and I know they're they're looking to do their best again this year. Absolutely. And I suppose looking back on the league and kind of the year as a whole, um, obviously that win over the Dubs was great, getting a semi-final place, but you were kind of narrowly pipped. But since then, you've really pulled yourselves back up and had a strong Connacht campaign, have looked very good in the All-Ireland Championship so far. Yeah, it's certainly something we looked at, you know, being the nearly team and maybe not getting past and maybe watching Mayo get further than us last year after beating in the Connacht final. All these things probably, I suppose, you know, do drive you on. And I suppose every team is looking for something to, to drive them on, just to get that edge. Because when it comes down to these to these tight games, it's the fine margins that are getting you over. So I suppose it's, you know, looking for that perfection in the performance and everyone being on the same page, and, which Galway definitely are. But we are, we are in, in a, no doubt, you know, denying the, the opposition that we're facing now on Saturday. Absolutely, and I suppose you kind of you speak of that that you're kind of sick of being the early team and whatnot. Do you think you still have a point to prove, or have you kind of established yourselves as a force to be reckoned with so far? Oh yeah, no, we've 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 uh, certainly established ourselves. You know, as a uh, I think the top four teams there now are, are very strong. But even even teams coming to here, it's the senior league in general is very competitive and. Um, Unfortunately for Tip, they had to go down there, but even themselves were were very competitive this year. So I suppose it's just you know trying to like that, just get over the get over the line now on Saturday and hope that you've done enough. Absolutely, and I suppose um, Stephen Glennon there at the helm with you guys, he's been doing serious work. What's he like to kind of work under? Oh yeah, I know. Sure, we've we've been outstanding management. Um, we've we've with them for two years now, which makes all the difference. You know, when you when you get to know people in it on a personal basis, and uh, you know, Stephen, he's outstanding. He he um, he really goes to, goes over and beyond to do do what he can, and he's a super team behind him. We've Kira and Noel and Tim and Mike and Katrina and Katie, and you'd be afraid you'd miss. We've lovely <laughs> lovely panel out, and um, Dylan and Gary, you'd be afraid you'd miss somebody, but. Um, no, they're outstanding and extremely professional in the way they they go about themselves. And we're we're, we're pushing it to the men there in Galway and how professional we are. So that's that's another positive as well. Absolutely, I suppose fell just short there on Sunday with the hurling. Were you at it or did you watch it or? Yeah, no. Unfortunately, now I I wasn't going to be able to hack the day in a crutch. No. So we dropped off the family uh, to Crow Park and uh, myself and mom went to the to the flat up there and dropped it. So we. We got comfortable and watched the minor and the, the senior, and we'll, we'll take the first win, but God, we'll have to reevaluate the second loss. <laughs> it's over to the ladies to do the job on Saturday, though, I suppose. <laughs> ladies, and then, Alva, of course, there's kind of there's a few of you from my Cullen in, in, in the panel, um, yourself and Owen, your McDonough, and then Noel Kelly's there as a selector. That must be nice to, to have the crowd of you. Oh, yeah, super. And it's getting a few representatives from you know our side it is it is um predominantly there on, on the northeast of Galway and um it is great <laughs> we we if uh, we'd be messing that we're saying we're traveling too far for training but no we're we're very lucky in fairness and uh Noel's great you just bring us to training and I have sisters they're all involved in underage and dad is a selector in underage so it's great not to have another another car going <laughs> every little every little helps when you have a, when you have a busy house <laughs> so there's plenty coming through <laughs> that's it <laughs> good stuff and i suppose will you get to common on saturday to support the girls alva i will of course yeah yeah so we're we're going training tonight again and and thursday so it will be big day out on saturday Brilliant, good stuff. I suppose I have one quick question to ask you now before I let you go. Um, Jackie Cahill, the LGFA's communications officer, is in the studio here and he wants to know 
Um, is that a cat or a dog behind you there on the screen? <laughs> oh, it's a dog. <laughs> and what's the dog's name? <laughs> Can you see him? Can indeed. And what's his name? <laughs> Rubble, it's well it's tail in Irish, it's actually rubble, but we're kind of we're kind of mixing the names up. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, he's he's definitely a man anyway. <laughs> and he's helping with the recovery as well. <laughs> he is, he is. Great stuff. Well look, thank you so much, Alva. Really appreciate your time. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, Emma. Thanks very much. And hopefully we'll be hoping for a Galway one on Sunday, Saturday, will we? <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Alva. So I'm delighted to be joined in studio by Ashton McCarthy, 2017 Intermediate Players Player of the Year Thanks, and also Ashley. Tipperary star. Uh, I suppose we'll start off with, with Sunday first. We have to um, go straight to it and yeah. how disappointing it was. Um, yeah, like it's still like really raw, I suppose, at the moment. Um, it was probably a chance um, that we should have taken to stay up senior. It was a massive prize, even one of the girls talked about it beforehand and it was probably like an All-Ireland final really. Um, back in September we played for the exact same prize to stay as, mm -hmm. or become a senior team and then stay as a senior team. Um, I suppose we had a very good first half performance, we were up by 8 points and even the start of the second half we got another score so we were like 9 points up and like in the driving seat really. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just think a few kind of controversial decisions maybe went um, against us and it really put us on the back foot and Cavan obviously took advantage of that as you would. Um, the momentum really swung with them and they started to drive at us and um, they got a good few kind of goals um, that really just we couldn't get back from then. But um, just I really do think that some of the decisions that were made maybe by the referee from both sides, like it was quite just inconsistent and I just think it kind of didn't allow the game to flow and didn't really make it a fair battle really. Um, I think even some Cavan girls did say like how are we going to um, kind of compete with them when we 13 players on the pitch for a lot of the second half. But look, to be fair to them, um, I suppose we beat, beat them in the Division 2 final. Um, they probably had a point to prove that they want to be the ones going up to Division 1. But um, I suppose even before the match, um, Sam, our captain, spoke that she would swap the Division 2 Cup um, to end up still being a senior team. So I think it's just really disappointing. Um, all the progress we've made um, throughout the last 18 months that we're back basically to square one. Um, I just don't think it's great for the development of tip ladies, even um, the younger girls coming up, like to develop them playing senior football would be brilliant, but we now have to take a step back and regroup and try to compete at intermediate, which is no easy feat really. You can see how competitive it is. Um, people like Wexford, I would have put my house on it really, that they'd be back in an All-Ireland final. Mm -hmm. and. They didn't win their provincial championship Absolutely. and they didn't get to semi-final even so just don't know what the future holds really next year so it's just really disappointing. Absolutely and I yeah. suppose it is it is gutting because as you say you did compete well at senior, you yeah. did contest, um, you were very competitive in Munster and then even through the All-Ireland stages it was just kind of two bad results in the, yeah. in the relegation playoffs. Yeah like even the way the championship was run this year I think a lot of people were kind of praising how it was ran and um, it did seem to have very competitive games throughout with the group stages and things and it gave people a lot of games but mm -hmm. I think just from our perspective um, we got drawn against Cork um, in our first Monster mm -hmm. Championship match and we were buzzing for it and we really prepared really well and we thought we had a chance to get into Monster Final and Senior um, but unfortunately that day Cork just came out on top only by five points and we get seeded then as like a weaker county mm -hmm. per se and we end up in a group with um, two very seasoned, experienced um, senior teams in Kerry and Donegal. Absolutely, I think which, that group was nearly yeah, the group, the group of the dead, championship. The kind Absolutely. Of, yeah. So like we're on the back foot there straight away and mm -hmm. we're just trying to progress. And then we held our own though um, against those two, I suppose. Our first outing um, against Kerry was quite disappointing. Mm -hmm. um, we lost by six points, but um, their defence was really well. They held us out and they took their chances when we um, didn't. And then. We kind of had a good attitude then going into the Donegal game, it was kind of a do or die mm -hmm. then um, and we kind of expressed ourselves a bit more, there was no pressure on us, um, so we, did, we performed really well and we ended up on the losing side again by only three points but mm -hmm. it just kind of shows that there's such small margins I suppose Absolutely. up at senior level but I do think that we don't deserve to be going back down 
Um, it's not that we, we were getting handed beatings um, from mm -hmm. every team we played. Um, I do think um, we are starting to really kind of get to know ourselves up at, up at senior level and it's just a pity now that we have to go Absolutely. back down when, when I think that if we um, bet either Waterford or Cavan, we would have kind of regrouped and um, mm -hmm. looked at what we could have worked on and I think Division 1 football then next year would have really um, brought us Absolutely. on even more for a Monster Championship again. But look, we're just going to have to kind of yeah. take it. But it's really disappointing, yeah. And I suppose, what was the mood like on Sunday after that game? It must have been very um, somber, like. Yeah, it was actually like losing an all Ireland yeah. final. I don't know, it was just disbelief, really. Um, I suppose I got a sin bin, so I was off for 10 mm -hmm. minutes, and I just like was just seeing the, the action unfold in front of me, and there's nothing I could have done, and I just felt so helpless, and the momentum just started to go with them, and just, it just kind of started to fall apart yeah. really and then um, Siobhan as well and Ashton they were both off as well so like it just there's just nothing went our way in the mm -hmm. second half and like our first half performance was was very good um, and it's just a pity it ended on that note because Absolutely. like over the last 18 months I suppose like what we have achieved um, we kind of have to think about that but it's just hard to think of um, all the positives when mm -hmm. like it's still so close to Sunday and how it's 100%. such a disappointing result. It is raw, as you say. Yeah. But I suppose maybe we could, just for a second, yeah. go back to, I suppose, the better days of last year and how big that year was for you guys like to go unbeaten and to finish it with an All-Ireland Intermediate title. Yeah. It must have been amazing. No, it was class. Like Even just from the outset, um, like we obviously had set goals. Mm -hmm. um, we were in Division 3. We wanted to get out of there to develop tip um, for the future, obviously. And then um, Munster Championship and an All-Ireland, which every team probably does set out to do at the start of the year. But we really thought they were achievable. And I suppose we just took one game at a time and it just unfolded really the whole year and mm -hmm. like it just started getting better and better and it was just class like and there's a few times that it was nearly whipped away from Absolutely. us. Absolutely. <laughs> Even like the once final we were down by, I don't know, eight or nine points against Clare and we came back and then the quarter Wexford. final Wexford brought us to extra time and we barely got over that day. Mead, uh, we were up by, I don't know how much. We just kind of tried to make yeah. it hard for ourselves but it made it a bit better and then I think... Um, the All Ireland final day probably mm -hmm. was the most um, wholesome performance we had. Yeah. I think um, everyone really stepped up to the mark. Um, you know, there was no one like out of their depth across the whole pitch, and I think that we all just worked so well together. Um, like I don't think anyone really you know, stood out. It was just a yeah. whole Tipperary team performance, and I think that it just all clicked in the day, and it was just extra special. It was class like I just think of back on it but they're the days you have to remember I suppose when you think of Sunday um, I know it's tough now people are probably like soul searching thinking Absolutely. this that what could we have done but like you have to do have to take a step back and look at the, the real progress that we made throughout the year mm -hmm. um, so no it's been it has been great but we'll just have to build again now for mm -hmm. next year and I suppose was there one kind of standout moment last year was it when that final whistle went in Crow Park or kind of is there just one kind of outlasting memory that you'll have? Um, yeah, I think it was the final whistle. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you just kind of look around and the hooter's going. I think the hooter actually adds <laughs> yeah. it all. And I think Ashley kicked the ball up and we all just, you just don't know like mm -hmm. what to do really. I think just like overwhelmed with emotions. I think you're, you're crying, but you're laughing, yeah. but you're smiling and everything. And then um, I suppose afterwards then I could see like my grandparents mm -hmm. and my parents and stuff in the stand and you're running over to the side of the pitch to see them and that was just class. Like, Brilliant. You yeah. enjoyed that one? Yeah, <laughs> no it was unreal. Yeah. And I suppose the weeks that went after it as well must have been amazing and you know you had a few nice individual moments too, you got player of the match in the final and then winning yeah. player of the year obviously that night at the All-Stars was brilliant too. Yeah, I suppose it, it's nice like to get kind of individual mm -hmm. accolades as well, but obviously it was the success of the Tiberi team that obviously made um, someone obviously highlighted then my my um, performances and things because mm -hmm. of um, the team around me. Um, and I suppose yeah, like even player the match that day. Like as I said, I don't know if anyone really stood out, yeah. but um, that was obviously a really nice thing to get. And then. Uh, myself and Ashton then both nominated for Player of, of the Year and like we're both in the same club, club. I, like it's just class and then like it's pity only obviously one of us could get it and I'm delighted like that I obviously did get it um, 
and like it, I had a lot of confidence saying going into this year, you know, mm -hmm. just knowing that other pe players that I played against kind of thought of me that highly. Mm -hmm. um, but no, yeah, it was a great few weeks, and even with um, my club care, we played the county Absolutely. final like a week later, yeah. and we won the first senior county final. So like it just kind of all rolled into one, so it was brilliant. Absolutely, um, whirlwind. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose you speak off your club care there. There's yeah. kind of there's a good crew on the tip panel. Yeah, there's. Um, Myself, Ashling, Roisin, Emma Buckley as well, and Rachel O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. um, Rachel's young, she was kind of injured this year, she hurt her shoulder. But yeah, I know there's five of us and um, like, do you know, there's, we've been growing up, we're all around the Absolutely. same age and we've been growing up together. We've been winning um, under eight titles together with Care. We won um, Fela when you were younger as well. So like, do you know, it's great then on the bigger days, like in Crow Park when we're all together mm -hmm. um, and things like that. And to bring back that to Care, um, the younger girls like looking up to you yeah. and things and I, it's great for like the the team spirit and the club spirit and things like that um, like that's where you start Absolutely. your football um, that's where um, you kind of obviously become the player you are um, so like you'd be grateful to mm -hmm. to care for obviously giving you the opportunity then to be able to play for Tipperary so kind of gives yeah. everyone a lift yeah as well yeah and yeah. um, you want a club camogie title look here a few years back in Grover. um yeah I was 2016, 2016 I think yeah um I was captain oh really so, yeah I actually didn't know that <laughs> yeah I was captain that Brilliant. year um yeah I play camogie I played underage uh -huh. for a tip but I just focus on football. football at the moment but I still play club and that was extra special as well. I think it was it was kind of different to last year's Absolutely. football win. Um, it was just like such a parish mm -hmm. kind of community thing. Um, and again with that, it was just like one step at the time. We won our first um, intermediate county championship that year and we went mm -hmm. on into the unknown um, playing Munster. Seemed to win that. Then we were playing Tullerone from Kilkenny mm -hmm. who like Joe the Kingpins of Kobe and Hurling really. Uh -huh. And we came out on top of that. I think that was nearly our, our All Ireland that day. Mm -hmm. And then I think just the day we played um, in Crow Park, everything just yeah. kind of flowed and we really expressed itself. And that was really a special day as well. So you have a few nice memories from yeah. all the years across both codes. Like. Yeah, I do, yeah. Um, I suppose like playing in Crow Park, I have good memories. Mm -hmm. um, in 2013, I was involved when we lost to Calvin. Of course. Um, I was only young, Calvin. but yeah. <laughs> Calvin and yeah. <laughs> It's a good rivalry there now at this <laughs> Just stage. Just a bit. But, um, yeah, other than that, like, I'd have great memories of mm -hmm. Crow Park and obviously going to try to get back there maybe at a higher level, but maybe next year you'll have to be intermediate again but absolutely well, yeah. well I suppose maybe just looking at the year as a whole for tip yeah. like you kind of can't forget that you obviously won promotion to division yeah. one you won the league um so you do have that to look forward to next year too yeah um like division one will be another huge step up wow. um, yeah like we're going to be playing against the best teams obviously in the country um week in one week out mm -hmm. um so like that will be great for the development um of tip as well and just to have those matches going into championship will be great um i suppose i don't know if it's ever been done before where an intermediate yeah. team is up in division one but look um it will uh, give us a lot of lessons um, we'll have a lot to learn every match um, and hopefully then it will bring us all together and we'll be well able for exactly. the championship it's, an, it's a nice space I suppose yeah. for the intermediate championship yeah it really yeah. is we'll be in a probably more advantageous position mm -hmm. than any other team really um, even the teams in division two um, will be another hopefully step mm -hmm. forward in them so Look, it's not all cons, I suppose. Um, like we'll have to be some way positive going yeah. forward. Um, and we're just delighted with the year we've had. Pity it ended on kind of a sour exactly. note, but no, we're happy with what we've Absolutely. achieved. And I suppose it's about kind of keeping this group together now, really. Yeah, like that's really important. Like sometimes after you have a loss, like mm -hmm. people can decide they're going away or just even like retirements, things like that. But hopefully, like we have a young crop of players, and with the experienced players we have, that we'd all kind of stay together and gel. And look, over the next few weeks, we'll kind of um, obviously be thinking about what could have been done, what should have been done, and things like that. But hopefully, we'll all come together again um, next year and drive on. Absolutely. And I suppose we were speaking off air there. Um, you're finished now in, in UL. Yeah. A few good years there. Um, yeah. Uh, I had four years in UL. I was doing physio. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose playing college football there, I think, really um, stood to me as well, going back to the county setup. Um, I've never come across such a professional setup below in UL, and mm -hmm. I just loved it. Um, I won two O'Connor Cups there, 
Um, sadly, that this year was a tough one as well. Um, but um, no, it's been brilliant. And even just getting to play with girls from other counties, mm -hmm. like um, the Galway girls going out this weekend and the Cork girls and things like that. Um, it's just something really different, something that Absolutely. you don't really experience anywhere else. And mm -hmm. it's hard to describe. But no, I had a great four years um, in UL and I'm forever grateful to everyone down there, players and management and Pretty everyone. sad to be finished up. Yeah, you? out in the real world now. <laughs> That's not sure it. what we're doing, but... <laughs> you yeah. working away in a clinic though, in um, care, Yeah, it? I work in care physio clinic at home. Brilliant. Um, so I started up, she's big into sport as well. So I started that, I graduated in June and started. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll see how I go. I'm going, doing a maternity leave there now for the next couple of months Brilliant. anyway. And then... Um, I might try travel a bit, maybe find a hospital job, things Fair. things like that. Hopefully, opportunities will start to open up, but it's um, early days yet. So of I'll just course. take everything of as course. it comes and try find my feet a bit in the real world. And well, I suppose how has it been <laughs> kind of balancing a job with your football and with your club camogie and whatnot as well? Um, yeah, I found it tough enough just after graduation, yeah. um, just finding my feet really, just mm -hmm. um, getting used to a routine and things. But at during the summer it was actually okay, I was only working yeah. a few days so I was able to get used to it. Um, but I say the real test now will be when I'm <laughs> becoming more full time. But um, no, like the clinic are really um, like mindful that I do play sport and they knew that before they asked me to work and things like that. So that really helps and then I suppose um, like the physio job as well complements mm -hmm. playing sport so it's brilliant. 100% and I yeah. suppose just quickly uh, this summer yourself and Ashton Maloney ran a summer camp for girls, Oh yeah. Uh, ladies football summer camp, you enjoyed it? Um, yeah we ran a tip for girls um, summer camp in um, tip in just three different locations mm -hmm. and like there was a big response to it, it was great, um, I think the girls really enjoyed it. Um, and I just saw like the um, real enthusiasm there is mm -hmm. amongst the young kids that are in TIP and like they want to be playing for TIP. They look up to all the girls on the team and I think maybe win the All Ireland things like that last year made some of the girls household names mm -hmm. and um, Sam came to visit and we had a few of the men seniors as well. Um, I think it was a great success and hopefully that would kind of um, develop the girls a little bit more as well and there's great underage um, development going on in Tipperary so that'll all be feeding up now into our senior team so um, no, there's um, a brilliant kind of setup going on at Tip and hopefully you'll just keep driving for it. Brilliant and I suppose lastly I don't want to put you on the spot too much <laughs> now and I know it might break your heart a little bit that you're not there this weekend but I suppose two massive semi-finals yeah. in senior grade on Saturday and um, we're looking at Donegal and Cork and Dublin and Galway is there any way you could call them? <laughs> Um, it's tough enough now. It's very tough. But I don't know, I'd be afraid I'd be shooting myself in the foot here. But um, <laughs> I think the Cork Donegal game, I think Cork are just getting better mm -hmm. and better um, every game they're playing. I was talking to Jackie there, the goals they've racked up mm -hmm. um, this season is phenomenal. Phenomenal. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but like, yeah, so I think Cork could, okay, could um, edge, it. edge it. But look, I don't know if Donegal had their shooting boots on. Um, it could be a shootout line. between mm -hmm. the two forward lines. Um, maybe it's going to be who, which defence is tighter on the day Absolutely. there. Um, the Dublin-Galway match then, um, a bit of a soft spot for Galway. Um, I was talking to Tracy Denner there earlier and I just, I don't know why I just had this yeah. feeling that um, they're kind of going in fairly quietly mm -hmm. um, into the championship. They've kind of been working away. There's not real yeah. big talk They've had about a very them. good year. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think they could pull off a bit of a shock of but look, um, Dublin uh, reigning all Ireland yeah. champions, you can never write them off. To look um, them too, look. Yeah, if they're as clinical and efficient mm -hmm. as they can be, I think, look, it could go down to the wire. I'd like to see Galway. Okay. Yeah. Ashling's going Galway Cork. <laughs> <laughs> but look, it honestly could go anyway on yeah, Saturday, I do it's think. Nuts, like, um, it'll be very interesting to see who we have in that All Ireland final in a few weeks' time. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. It's going to be a good one, anyway, yeah. definitely. Um, well, look, that's all we have time for today. Um, just a reminder on Saturday's action in Dr Hyde Park in Roscommon. First up, it's the intermediate semi-final meeting of Meath and Roscommon, and then that's followed by two massive senior semis. Cork and Donegal, that's at 2.45, and Dublin and Galway go head-to-head -head at half four. And if you can't make it down to Dr Hyde Park, um, the three games are live on TG Carher. Uh, so thanks a lot for tuning in at home, and of course, thanks to Ashton for calling yeah. into the studio. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem, and thanks a million to Alva, who we had on the line from Galway earlier. Um, so yeah, we'll be back next week to review the semi-finals and the weekend's action and we're looking forward to it already. Thank you.